Hi, my name is Mark Galley, and this is a summary of a webinar we presented on Flight 1549, the miracle on the Hudson that was back in January of 2009. This is the plane that took off from LaGuardia, bird strike, took out both engines, and then the crew landed the plane in the Hudson River, and there were no fatalities. Um, so it's certainly a failure of the engines, but it's a success that there were no fatalities. So we're looking at this as kind of a root cause success analysis on why did things go well, and you can use the same approach in, in your business. You probably remember the, uh, the images in the newspapers and on, on TV, uh, on the Internet, about the aircraft when it landed in the river and the people that are, that are standing on the wings as the boats come to, uh, to pick them up. So kind of a neat story at the time. The cause and effect relationships of any issue, whether it's good or bad, are laid out first by starting with the goals and asking why questions and backing through the issue. What starts very basic in terms of cause and effect can be more detailed, uh, and then it can be very detailed as you continue to drill down into uh, a particular incident. Um, this is the idea of why the why it's called a cause map. It can start very basic and then you can zoom in and add a little bit more detail and you can zoom in and add a lot more detail but it never really contradicts the previous uh, level. These different maps are accurate which allows you to start every incident very uh, basic. You can actually put evidence it's more detailed investigation and then actually use that as a framework to consider different options in terms of uh, solutions. Um, the crew uh, Captain Sullenberger, First Officer Skiles, and the, the flight attendants that were on board were very, very experienced crew. Um, Captain Sullenberger wrote a, a book called The Highest Duty, which is down in the, the right-hand corner. And one of the quotes in the book on page 41 uh, from his experience, uh, he said, An airline accident is almost always the end result of a causal chain of events. If any one link was different, the outcome may have been different. Almost no accident was the result of just one problem. In most cases, one thing led to another, and then there was too much risk and a bad outcome. In aviation, we need to keep looking at the links in the chain. So the whole idea of a chain of events is how that, that, in that cause map, it shows how all those cause and effect relationships connect together. As he said, if any one of those links, if any one of those cause and effect relationships is different, it can change the outcome of the entire entire issue. So for an incident to occur, occur, you really need all of the causes, whether it went well or it went poorly. So we'll look at the cause and effect relationships of what went well in this particular case. The NTSB did a, a thorough investigation and there's a kind of a neat animated graphic at ntsb.gov about this incident and the flight path and you can see the, some of the transcript of the communication between um, Sullenberger and Skiles and then the communication between uh, the aircraft and the, the control tower when this was going on and you get an idea of how, how these people manage a crisis uh, right in the middle of that uh, event in terms of how clear and calm the communication is. Now, root cause analysis is typically used for something that has already happened that was negative, but you can also do cause and effect analysis on something that you want to prevent from occurring in the future. Um, you can do cause and effect analysis on something that turned out well in this particular case and you want to know why it went well but you can also map something that has not happened yet but you want to produce those results in the future so it's a desired result in the future you want to create root cause analysis is usually thought of as working a failure failure modes effects analysis is looking at cause and effect relationships of things in the future and then we basically just uh, added the word success if you're looking at anything positive so cause and effect really doesn't change based on the issue you're working. It's just, was it a positive issue? Was it a negative issue? Was it in the past or was it in the future? But the principle of cause and effect stays the same in all four cases. So on our website, which is at thinkreliability.com, there's a three-page PDF in the uh, CauseMap examples for um, the Flight 1549 uh, analysis. And I'm going to open that up real quick and we'll step through that, uh, that PDF. It's three pages long. There's a more detailed map. The first page uh, starts with really just a summary of what is root cause analysis and how do you read a cause map and what are the basics between a fishbone and a cause map, how they align in, in principle. And then it's got some notes here about the cause and effect relationships within this incident. So the question here is, well, why did the captain decide to ditch the aircraft in the Hudson? You know, well, because the aircraft was unable to maintain altitude and the plane was already aligned with the river and the pilot was avoiding an attempt to land uh, at the airport, which actually 
was too far away and it actually moved him away from the, the populated areas. Well, those causes are shown here in terms of producing uh, this effect. There are some more cause and effect relationships uh, with a basic problem outline on the next page. And one of the questions is, well, why on this incident were there no fatalities in the city? Well, in this case, the, the crew, they guide the aircraft clear of populated areas. They're, uh, they're able, they decide to ditch in the Hudson River, and the aircraft is already at 3,200 feet. The point here is that the pilot guided the aircraft clear of populated areas because they're at this altitude of 3,200 feet, and they decided to ditch in the river. And there are some causes of why they decided to ditch in the river, one of them being they're unable to maintain the altitude because of the bird strike. If the bird strike happened at 800 feet, it could significantly have changed this incident. So it's not great to have the bird strike, but the fact that it's over 3,000 feet uh, mitigates risk because they're able to clear um, New York, and in this case, line up with the Hudson. When you go through the detail of why did the aircraft land smoothly in the water, which resulted in the plane not breaking apart, not having fatalities over here, instead of just saying, well, it's the skill of the crew and the captain, there's really detail in here that say, well, what do you mean? What, what specifically has to happen? And this is what you do in your company instead of just saying, well, this went well because they know what they're doing, is you'd identify what specifically did they do. So the aircraft nose was kept up, the wings are level, and in this particular case, the river's calm. If it was choppy, it could have been more of a problem on how the aircraft came into the, to the water, and that's because... Um, the nose is up, the aircraft is level because it was flown smoothly because of the skill of the captain, and when they designed the aircraft, uh, the control surfaces could still be uh, moved in terms they could fly the aircraft even without the, uh, the engines providing the power, which is an important idea in the design phase to also mitigate risk. Why were there no fatalities? Um, because of hypothermia. Uh, because the time that people in the cold water was minimized because of the boats showing up uh, so quickly. And there were no deaths because of drowning because the aircraft remains partially afloat. The aircraft had actually, with the flotation slides and the ditch switch, would actually allow the plane to, to float like a, uh, like a boat. People are able to get out of the plane. That allows for a more detailed analysis where all these cause and effect relationships can be connected together. So to show how these link, there's a, a simple view here that shows, here's that, that first page that I went over of the PDF, and then there's some of the cause and effect relationships here on that second page, and what we shown, uh, what is shown here is that these cause and effect relationships fit right over here in this part of the map. These cause and effect relationships are, are in this part of the map. And then this one down here is shown, and this one down here is shown. So if you print out this PDF, you can read through it and see all of the things that had to happen to produce this result of no fatality. So the altitude of the aircraft and the way the crew responded, uh, the role that the flight attendants played in terms of preparing the aircraft. So one of the examples is the, the, um, the slide that deploys when the door is open. Uh, it floats and people are able to get out on that, that slide. It, it acts like a, a raft in that case. That slide has to be armed and disarmed every time the plane uh, leaves the jetway or arrives at the jetway so they can open the door. Flight attendants with 26 years of experience may have never deployed the slide because they've never landed in the water before, but for 26 years on every flight, they arm and disarm the door. And some companies say, well, we haven't had this issue for five years. I don't know if you really need to keep doing this task. But you see how important that is for a highly reliable organization or what happens within the aviation industry is they run through a checklist and say, we need to go through these things on every single flight. So there's some good lessons inside the detail of this analysis that you can use within your group. If you're not flying aircrafts, you still have this idea of risk, and there's some lessons in here on what can be done can, to mitigate that. So if you have any other uh, questions about um, our approach, our method, or are interested in, in uh, attending any of the training or seeing one of your incidents work, don't hesitate to contact us uh, at the information here on the, uh, on the screen. Thanks very much, and have a great day.